Hey everybody, I'm making some videos for my robotics class. It's been a while since I've done some of these, so I'm going to go ahead and get things started. And uh, I just want to get very basic uh, getting started with your EV3 robot. We're going to use Robot C to program it. And uh, you notice that we already got it constructed. I just want to point out a couple things. Um, one thing is when you're going to program it, you got to think about where's the front of the robot. Because uh, right here, we're going to position, and we have these to help position the robot. So we want to like have it start in a certain spot. This will be here to help show us where to start. You'll also notice we have two motors, one wheel on either side. The two motors are powering directly. They're directly connected to the wheels themselves. And you notice in the back, we got this little, it kind of sort of rotates around. It's got a little wheel. So it just basically will trail behind it as it goes. And you can do things like turn or whatever. Um, in this tutorial, I just kind of want to get you going and uh, setting up and just make sure everything runs right for doing this on Robot C. I'm going to go ahead and power this up right here. That's the power button. And it powers that up. While we're doing that, I'm going to go open up Robot C for Lego Mindstorms. And this is version 4. And that's what I'm using. And the first thing you want to do is on menu level, make sure you go to super user. And then on the robot, make sure on the platform type, you use Lego Mindstorms EV3. And I recommend you check natural language. Once you do that, you're going to have some natural language, simple behaviors like backward, forward, move. These are going to be very handy when you're getting started. And then we've got more things for remote control, timing, line tracking even. Yeah, that's right. So make it so easy. I can't believe I just gave that to you. That's a free of charge. That's what you get for watching my video. Yeah, lots of good insider information. So we got our platform type all set up. We're ready to begin. Uh, I'm going to go over here, and I see that it's powered up. Let me just zoom in on that a little bit here so you can kind of see what's going on. You can see I got a couple programs um, on here, and it's a little hard to see. The, it's a little fuzzy. I'm going to bring this down a little. And uh, well, anyway, we'll, we'll worry about that in a moment. Um, first thing, like I said, we want to look at the motors. We talked about there are two, and uh, you'll notice they're A and B. A little bit hard to see, but let's just bring it around this way. Um, you'll notice A is on the, this side, B is on this side. Remember, this is the front of the robot, so we're going to bring it back down this way. A is actually using the left side, so A is the left motor. B is the right motor. Let me zoom back out a bit. Okay, so those are the two motors. I also have a gyroscopic sensor, and I'm going to use this for a reason in just a moment. Um, the gyro is connected to port number four. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file in Robot C, and we're going to name it. So we're going to give this a name. And I already have a folder for all of my Robot C challenges, and we'll just put a sample program. And I'm going to get rid of the space. Uh, it's not a good idea to get in the habit of space putting spaces in your file names, especially when you're dealing with the C programming language uh, or C++. Anything that ends with .C is just C. Anything with CPP is for C++. I'm going to click Save. OK, once you have your sample program here, you'll see it says Task Main. We need to, uh, let's double check by downloading the firmware. Make sure that that gets downloaded successfully. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we're going to do motor and sensor setup. This is an important part here. So you look here where it says motor. And remember I said A and B. A was the left, so I'm just going to call this left motor. I'm going to use what's called, uh, yeah, left motor. EV3 motor large. And make sure you choose the drive motor side. That is left. I think you get this when you do the natural language, which you're going to need. And then I'm going to type the right motor as I'm looking down on it from the perspective of the robot. And now I choose it's on the right side. In a moment, I'm going to tell you whether you need to reverse either of these or not. Um, you're going to want to reverse them if you're using gearing. But I'll show you whether this configuration needs it reversed or not. Um, and uh, when it comes to the motors, so what you don't want to do is have it one of them be reversed and not check it in here. If these need to be reversed, reverse it here. Don't change your code to accommodate the fact that you set it up wrong. Does that make sense? I'm going to click on sensors, and it's sensor 4. 
So we're going to just call this the gyro. And for the sensor, we're going to choose the gyro. And we get to choose what sensor mode we're going to do. I'm going to get to do angle only. And if you have other sensors, you can see these are other sensors that are available. If you have an older version, you have NXT Legacy. This is going to be really important if you're using one of the old, like if you have a mix and match where you have some NXT parts, you're going to want to make sure you're using the right one because they're going to behave differently. So if we do color, for example, we can do reflected, ambient, color, reflected, raw, color, raw. I won't go into the detail here, but just know you do, when you set a sensor, make sure you pay attention to what the sensor mode is. That's all I need. I just need the sensors and the, and the motors, and I just got to make sure I'm connected to the right ports, which I already talked about the ports anyway. That adds these three lines of code. We're about ready to test. So when we're ready to program it, before we do it, I'm going to give you one, a uh, couple more things I want you to be aware of. And so I'm going to full screen this, this dude here. Remember I was talking about the gyro sensor. Um, let me do one quick thing to clean this. All right, sorry, it's a little hard to get this all set up just right. Um, I want to talk about like port view. So by the way, you can navigate left and right. Uh, you can see sort of these tabs along the top. You can navigate left and right using these buttons. And uh, what you want to do is you want to navigate to port view because this is going to be really handy. And I'm going to go up to show you the motors. Notice we have the A, large motor degree. So we have it set here. It says zero degree. Uh, I can go to the right. That one also says zero degrees. Okay. So let me show you what that looks like. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit because I want to show you when I move it. Give me just a moment here. I'm going to move it up here. Sorry, I've got a bunch of debris here. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pull it off the ground, I'm going to roll it forward. And you can see suddenly now I'm at 209 degrees. Okay, so keep that in mind. And um, so that is that. And then let me also get down here just a little bit. And I want to talk about the, uh, I'm going to go over here, we're going to do the gyro. Now the gyro right now says negative four degrees, but it's not actually doing anything. I'm going to turn it to the left. So as you are turning to the left, the gyro is decreasing in degrees. See, it's negative 27. I'm going to turn it to the right until we see it go to zero. And now we're going, we're continuing to turn to the right clockwise. You're adding to the degrees. So this is a really handy thing because you can read what degrees you're at. You can program it based on what degree you're at on the gyro. But there's one really important thing you need to take into consideration. First of all, I'm going to boot this. I'm going to take this. I'm going to like turn it off, <laughs> deboot it, whatever, and go ahead and turn it off. Now, when I boot it up the next time, I'm going to be holding it in my hand. And um, so I just want to prove a point. So hang tight. Maybe a little light is better. I'm going to go ahead and boot it up, and I'm holding it with my hand, right? So you might be, you know, like in a hurry, you grab your robot, you boot it up, and you're carrying it to wherever you're going to take it, your competition, your whatever. Um, now, notice I'm holding it, and I'm kind of exaggerating a little bit, but this is not, I mean, if you were to actually pick it up and start walking with it, it's going to be a lot different. All right, and so I'm going to let it go ahead and boot up. And then what I want to show you is what happens to that port. So let me just I'm going to bring this down a little bit so you can kind of see it, see that port. Uh, so we're going to go over to port view. I'm going to select that. I'm going to go to the right. Oh, we're lucky. Worked. Oh, OK, that doesn't always happen. Okay, everybody, I, I, I needed to prove <laughs> I can get this to work. So I booted it up, and I just walked around the room holding it while it was booting. And now uh, I have it on a table. I'm not moving it, as you can see. And you see what's happened to the gyro. So this is just going to go on and on and on. And you try to run a program with the gyro doing that, and gyro is a part of your program, that's going to cause problems. So you want to make sure you boot this up when it's on a table it's your best bet to avoid this from happening but you can always just once you boot check the number there right away it should either say zero and if it says zero you're good eh, or if it just stays at one number you're good but if it's doing this that's never going to work so be careful when you are running the program 
All right, that being said, let's go back to our code and let's do some programming. We're just gonna drive forward a little bit. So we're gonna go to natural language, simple behaviors, forward. Now in forward, you just have to choose the quantity, unit type, and speed. So the quantity could be whatever the unit type is. And then you could be measuring that quantity in degrees, rotations, seconds, milliseconds. So I'm gonna try a forward I'm going to put 1 in its rotations, and we're going to use the default value, which is 50. And then we're going to wait, and it's 1,000, that's one second. And then we are going to do another forward, and this time we're going to do 360 degrees. And we're also going to set it to 50. And then uh, we'll wait one more time, uh, and then, yeah. Okay, so uh, we're going to go ahead and save the program, sample program. We're going to compile it. Um, now, you can skip the compile and go straight to download, and it will compile it and try to download it. All right, so now we're ready to start. So let's get this back here, and then um, I'm going to move this to one side and the code to the other. And so, sorry, I meant to do that one. And let's just kind of do a half screen thing going on here. And let's go ahead and run it. I'm going to hold it up for a second. You know what? I don't think, wait, I think that might be in seconds. I think that's milliseconds. I'm going to stop, clear all. Let me just download the robot a second time. All right, now I'm going to try it. There you go. Yeah, that was one second. All right, so now it's done running. And I want to show you this because I've added this little piece to the wheel so that I can track and test this out. So remember I said one rotation, and then I said 360 degrees. Now look at where it's pointing right now. It's pointing right about there. I'm going to run it again. Oops, I ran it twice. Hold on one more time. So we're trying to make sure it ends up in the same spot each time. But you notice how, okay, I, that was my mistake. Hold on. It's close. It's not always exactly 100% accurate. So you do need to take that into consideration. You may find that um, this is something that occasionally might cause you some problems. Uh, one thing I do to do it, uh, fix it, is if you're not trying to go for speed, you can slow it down a little bit. Sometimes it's a little more accurate when you do it that way. Uh, lower, lower power, I mean, would do that. But you do want to think in terms of rotations or degrees. You could do it seconds, but then the power can vary depending on how much, uh, how much juice is in the battery. So at this point, we tested it out. We know that it works. You know a little bit of how to program it. And I think that's all for today. So thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more.